Welcome to Are We Like Christ 6, Word of Men, Word of God. Satan both hates and fears the Word of God. He employs two main evils to supplant the truth of the written Word of God. One, tradition, and two, encounter. As Jesus rightly spoke, the traditions of men set aside cancel and invalidate the written Word of God. By embracing tradition, the Word of men then replaces the Word of God. Traditions of denominations cast the Word of God aside as irrelevant, considering the Word of men as superior revelations. Mark 7, 7-13 their worship is a farce, for they replace God's commands with their own man-made teachings. Neglecting the commandment of God, you hold to the tradition of men. You have a clever way of setting aside the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition, thus invalidating the Word of God by your tradition. Equally devastating are encounters that replace dependence upon the written revelation of God in His Word, the Bible. Visions, dreams, prophecies, inner light, meditation, revelations, angelic visitation, voices, power encounters, tongues, and a host of other encounters effectively replace dependence upon God's written word. The enemy of our soul has devised many serpentine twists to invalidate the scriptures. He is more crafty than any beast of the field, you know. Here are a few of his devices. 1. Partial inspiration. This error states that the Bible contains the Word of God, but also contains the Word of men, mistakes, and even legends and fables. This is folly. If the mouth of man is reproved for sending forth from the same opening both bitter water and sweet, James 3.11, how much more then the mouth of the Lord? If his word is both truth and error, then how can we trust it at all? And if his word to us is both falsehood and reality, then what kind of God is this? He is more like the devil than the Lord of light. If the history, geography, and language that we can test and verify are unreliable, then how do we know that any of the untestable things are reliable? Things like heaven, life after death, sin, forgiveness, and even the existence of God himself. How can we verify those unseen, untestable realities if the very means of communication of those to us contain error? We cannot. We are fools if we would believe anything it says. Jesus said in John 3.12, if I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? If the Bible contains both truth from God as well as human error, we cannot tell what is what. How do we distinguish between what is of God and what isn't? What kind of measuring device will we use to decide that? Listen, either the Bible is infallible or we imagine that we are. This 
is the crux of the matter. Either the scriptures judge us or we sit in judgment upon them. And since we are not infallible, then on what basis are we deciding that the word of God contains errors? Only by presumption and outrageous pride. Here are the testimonies of two of the authors of the word of God. 2 Peter 1.16 We did not follow cleverly devised tales when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's pretty straightforward. 2 Corinthians 4.2 We have renounced the things hidden because of shame, not walking in craftiness or ensnaring by bait, distorting the word of God, but by manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. That is also clear. Here, Peter and Paul, both authors of the inspired scriptures, explicitly assert that the revelation of God's word does not contain myth, man-made opinion, and human manipulation. So who then are we to contradict that? Others promote dynamic inspiration. This deception says that the Bible becomes the word of God to you, insomuch as the Lord may use it to speak to your heart. If John 3.16 moves you today, then God inspired it on that occasion. Tomorrow, when reading John 3.16, if nothing particularly speaks to you, then it is not inspired. They say the Bible is a conduit, a channel of inspiration though not inspired itself. If the water of inspiration flows through the pipe today, fine. If it doesn't tomorrow, fine. In this asinine delusion, the Bible is simply a means to an end. Inspiration comes as an encounter by God, and the Bible is merely a vehicle to that end. The pipe of the Bible is not inspired, only what flows through it from time to time. <laughs> Satan loves this one. So, the subjective personal experience and encounter of the reader decide whether each verse of the Bible is inspired or not. And that can change from day to day. Well, if that is the case, then we can equally receive inspired encounters from poetry, the Quran, a song on the radio, and even a newspaper. And if God can use anything as a means of inspiration, then the Bible becomes no different than anything else. So why bother with it? And thus the serpent with applause says, that's what I've been trying to tell you. The Bible is a relevant error. Just go for the encounter, according to my word, apart from that book. A third deception is salvation inspiration. This error states that the parts of the Bible addressing salvation and spiritual life are inspired by God. Other areas of the Bible may contain errors, myths, historical inaccuracies, and untrue statements in general. Incredibly, they claim that these untruths do not affect salvation truth. Jesus himself disapproves of this asinine assertion. 
Christ does not present fiction as actual, myth as history, nor error as truth. No, the scriptures are genuine and reliable historical accounts of people who truly existed and experienced the events spoken of. The miracles recounted in the Old Testament scriptures really happened. They were not fantastical tales fabricated to convey moral lessons to embellish Jewish national history, a type of spiritual Aesop's fables. Jesus himself speaks of all of the Old Testament as real, accurate, and historical. He is not deceived, neither does he deceive us by employing falsehood to lead us into truth. Look at Jonah, Matthew 11, 12, 39, 40. For just as Jonah was in the belly of the huge fish for three days and through nights, even so the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented when Jonah preached to them. And behold, something greater than Jonah is here. Matthew 16, 4, an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. Christ is the something greater than Jonah. Is he an even more outrageous fraud than the report of Jonah and the fish? If the events described in Jonah were invented myth, then so is Christ and his resurrection then there will be no judgment in the coming day. And there is no sign to anyone, and salvation is also a lie. And the serpent says, that's what I've been trying to tell you from the beginning. It's all a relevant error. If there's nothing miraculous about Jonah, then neither is there anything supernatural about Christ. If Jonah's miraculous resurrection from the belly of the fish is religious legend, then so is Christ's resurrection. Worse still, Christ becomes complicit in deception and fabricated claims to attain his end of obtaining followers by fraud. But Jesus is not duped. Neither does he mislead others. It is those who doubt the narrative of the scriptures that are duped by the serpent's word. What of Adam and Eve? Matthew 19, 4 and 5. Have you never read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and will be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. For the Lord Jesus, what is written is the actual revelation of the very Word of God. If you read the Word of God, you will discover what is real and true. Adam and Eve were created directly by the breath of God, via His Word, accomplished by the Holy Spirit. They did not evolve from lower forms of life. The Genesis narrative is fact, not fable. Christ was there. Evolution is the myth, not the Bible. Look at creation. Jesus said in Mark 13, 19, In those days there will be tribulation unlike anything that has happened from the beginning of the creation that God created. God is the creator of the creation. 
he employed no evolutionary mechanism. You cannot believe in the Jesus of the Bible and believe in evolution at the same time. If you embrace evolution, you reject the Word of God for the Word of man. And if you add to that, you have rejected Christ himself and account him to be a liar. Which will it be? And if you still cling to the delusion of evolution, know that you are the one that's mistaken, not Christ. He is the creator. All things were created by him, and apart from him, not one thing was created that has come into being. John 1, 3. Jesus is the creator. I think he knows what he's talking about, don't you? Look at the flood of Noah's day. Luke 17, 26, 27. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so too it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying. They were being given in marriage right up to the day that Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. If there was no worldwide flood, then neither will be there a worldwide judgment. If there was no ark bearing Noah and his family through those waters of judgment, then neither is there a Christ to rescue us from coming judgment. But Jesus says that not only was Noah a real person, but so also the ark itself and the worldwide flood. They are real, for Jesus is real, and he knows. It is the serpent who continues to whisper, The Bible is irrelevant error. You will not surely die. Things haven't changed. If the Old Testament narratives are mythology and human invention, then so is the salvation Jesus spoke of and Christ the Lord himself. These are the colliding views that cannot be reconciled. But Satan continues to deceive millions within the so-called church by altering and contradicting the word of God. If there are fictitious portions of the Bible, then ultimately Christ himself is not real. The serpent whispers still, Indeed, has God said? Does this really matter? It does. Thanks for reflecting with me on the Word of God today. My name is Steve Phillips, and I'd love to continue our discussion together. Drop me a comment here or on my email shown. Equally important is for you to share this video with those you are concerned about. Please do that. It will contribute to your efforts of making disciples also. If you click follow on Are We Like Christ, I will give you written Bible resources for free. Just provide me with your email and I'll send those and a list of my free books. So, until next time, keep asking yourself this question. Are we like Christ?